Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day around here. And I want to give a special shout out to all of our viewers and our sponsors, our brand new sponsors. And people keep asking me about sponsoring EPN. And what you got to do is you got to go to gaming.youtube.com slash EPN TV. They don't have it on the main YouTube page, which I know is kind of annoying. So we really appreciate everybody that's gone over to the gaming site and sponsored us. People like Dennis Sarazen, NTSC, Glenn Tong, and Martin Stein. This rundown is all yours. The Nintendo Switch isn't just a gaming device anymore. Hulu is now available to download on the Switch from the eShop, making it the first video streaming app available on the system. The Hulu app will work while the Switch is docked and undocked, making this another portable option for the service, although you'll obviously need an internet connection in order to stream. Like other Hulu apps, it will also be able to stream live video from partner TV networks. Other streaming apps like Netflix are expected to come to the Switch soon. The makers of Pokemon Go want to stupefy the world again with an even more magical augmented reality game. Pokemon Go developer Niantic Labs has officially announced that they're working on a Harry Potter AR game. It's called Harry Potter Wizards Unite, and although no footage has been released yet, Niantic says it will let players live out their fantasy of being a real-life wizard. Like Pokemon Go, players will be able to explore their real-world neighborhoods and discover fantastic beasts, and they'll also be able to join up with other would-be wizards to cast spells. Augmented reality seems like the perfect way to make users feel as though they're casting spells. We wouldn't be surprised if the game comes with some kind of magic wand peripheral, similar to the Pokemon Go Plus wristband. There's no release window yet for Harry Potter Wizards Unite, but late next year would coincide with the theatrical release of the second Harry Potter spin-off movie, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them Part 2. The game is being made in partnership between Niantic Labs and Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, which just set up a new subsidiary called Port Key Games, tasked specifically with creating Harry Potter-related games and apps. That means you can expect to see plenty of other new Harry Potter games after the one from Niantic is released. Solid Snake is sneaking his way closer and closer to movie theaters. The long and development Metal Gear Solid film is moving forward with a new screenwriter. Variety reports that writer Derek Connolly, best known for co-writing Jurassic World, has been hired to take another stab at the screenplay. The film's director, Jordan Voigt Roberts, previously worked with Connolly in his last big movie, Kong Skull Island. The Metal Gear Solid movie has been in development for several years, and we're very curious to find out more about the film's story, or more specifically, how much story it will have. The Metal Gear games have notoriously complicated plot lines and characters, something that probably won't translate into a feature-length movie, so it will be interesting to see what the screenwriters and producers decide to leave out. Adding the writer of Jurassic World could indicate that the studio wants to have a more straightforward action movie-style plot and pacing, but we'll have to wait and see. If you like King Kong, the massive monkey will soon be making his real-life debut on Broadway. A Broadway musical based on the iconic monster movie is set to open on November 8, 2018, with preview shows beginning a month before that. The show will be based primarily on the plot of the original 1933 Kong movie, with a team of explorers and a beautiful young actress venturing to Skull Island to capture the prodigious primate and bring him back to New York. The original movie actually has Kong being displayed on Broadway before he escapes, so it seems appropriate that he's finally getting a real-life Broadway show. Why, in a few months it'll be up in lights on Broadway! Kong! The coolest part is how the show will bring Kong to life. He's being created through a complicated blend of puppetry and robotics, and so the actors will actually be performing alongside a life-size Kong puppet. Pulling that off live every night will be an impressive feat all on its own. Over on the big screen, the new version of King Kong from Skull Island will face off against the new American version of Godzilla in the upcoming film called What Else? Godzilla vs. Kong. That arrives in 2020. Another group of movie monsters aren't having as much luck as King Kong or Godzilla. More evidence has come in that the planned Dark Universe from Universal Pictures is pretty much dead. The Dark Universe kicked off with a new Mummy movie earlier this year and was supposed to have an entire series of spin-offs focusing on different Universal monsters, but those plans were cast in doubt after the Mummy's poor box office reception. Now, there's another big nail in the coffin. According to The Hollywood Reporter, producers Alex Kurtzman and Chris Morgan have officially exited the franchise and the planned movies are no longer in active development. Kurtzman already hinted that he was leaving the Dark Universe and just last Last month, the planned Bride of Frankenstein remake was put on hold. Now, with all the other movies on hold as well, it means that the Dark Universe is basically dead and buried. We'll let you know if it rises from the grave. Over to a different kind of monster, at least an alleged one, Kevin Spacey is being removed from another big Hollywood production. 
Yes, here we go again. The new Ridley Scott movie, All the Money in the World, which was already finished and ready to be released next month, is replacing Kevin Spacey with another actor at the very last minute. Ridley Scott has begun reshooting all of Kevin Spacey's scenes with 87-year-old actor Christopher Plummer, which means that Spacey will no longer appear in the finished movie and will also be scrubbed from all the trailers and marketing material. This is an unprecedented move. Although actors have been replaced or edited out of movies before, it's never happened this close to release, so this will no doubt be a very complicated an expensive undertaking. Hopefully it doesn't cost all the money in the world. The good news is that Kevin Spacey was only a supporting character in the film, so the reshoots won't be as extensive as they would have been if he had a more substantial part. It's also possible for Ridley Scott to digitally replace Spacey with Plummer in certain shots, which would save them from having to go back to the same locations and sets. It will be very interesting to see how it looks in the finished film. All the money in the world is still slated to hit theaters on December 22nd. This just goes to show that Hollywood is taking the recent allegations of sexual misconduct against against Kevin Spacey very seriously. He's already been removed from the upcoming final season of House of Cards. What you thought you wanted is now here. Blade Runner 2049, more like Blade Ruiner 2049, am I right? The new sci-fi movie, despite being praised by critics, including yours truly, is officially one of the biggest box office bombs of the year. We already knew it wasn't doing well after performing way below expectations, but now that its theatrical run is pretty much over, The Hollywood Reporter projects that it will end up losing about 80 million bucks. There are several factors that have contributed to this. First is the film's production budget of more than 150 million, which is a lot more than most R-rated films. Another factor is the runtime. Blade Runner 2049 clocks in at more than two and a half hours, which means fewer showings per theater. Finally, the movie underperformed at the international box office just as bad as it did in North America, which means it won't be saved by emerging film markets like other recent movies. The failure of Blade Runner 2049 is especially disappointing given just how good the movie is. It's one of the best reviewed films of the year, and the poor box office numbers will make it less likely for Hollywood to invest in big budget, heady sci-fi movies like it in the future. The good news is that the original Blade Runner was also a bomb when it was released, but eventually found a large cult following on home video. Things were simpler then. So Blade Runner 2049 will probably have the same fate. I've already ordered my 4K Blu-ray. And the flying cars from science fiction movies like Blade Runner are about to become a reality. Uber has announced that they plan to begin testing their Uber Air flying taxis in Dallas and Los Angeles in the year 2020. Uber Air was first unveiled earlier this year, and the idea is to basically use little flying taxis to transport people in and around cities, which Uber hopes will significantly reduce travel times and pollution and won't cost that much more than a regular car service. The aircraft themselves will be electrical vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, also known as eVTOL. They're basically miniature airplane and helicopter hybrids that glide through the air like an airplane that take off and land vertically like a helicopter. Uber says they're safe, but don't be surprised if riders are a little nervous about using them when they first take off. After the test rollout begins in LA and Dallas, Uber hopes to expand Uber Air to the rest of the world, but there's no telling how long that will be. And before we go, the BBC has released the first official photo of actress Jodie Whittaker in costume as the new Doctor Who. There she is. Whittaker was first announced as the next Doctor earlier this year and will be the first woman to portray the shape-shifting Time Lord. Her first appearance will be in this year's Christmas special with her first regular episode slated to follow next year. That wraps us up for the rundown. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new episode for you, but you know we've got tons of other content for you to check out, so please do that. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell, and if you're so inclined, that sponsor button too.